Right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is a couple of minutes past uh, noon here. We're getting some feedback. <laughs> what did I do? Testing, testing. Your volume. Okay, how about now? That that cleared it up. All right, we're going to blame it on the new person here, so, you know. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started. Again, a couple of minutes past uh, noon. Uh, today is the Wednesday, February 8th uh, meeting of the Little Rock uh, City uh, Parks, Parks and Recreation Commission. So let's go ahead and get started with a roll call, and then we'll move on to the minute uh, minutes approval. Commissioner Bowie. Here. Commissioner Eldridge. Here. Commissioner Ellis. Here. Commissioner Firstful. Present. Commissioner Fletcher. Commissioner France. Here. Commissioner Linda Smith. Here. City Director Peck. City Director Lewis. Here. And City Attorney Beth Carpenter. Here. All right, very good. We have 100% uh, uh, attendance uh, with our commissioners, so fantastic. And everybody on the commission gets a gold star for having their video turned on and their microphone available. So thank you guys for that. Much appreciated. Let's go ahead and quickly move to the minutes uh, before I think an introduction is ordered. So did it, everybody got a copy of the January meeting minutes uh, from Eric? Recently, were there any amendments or edits that anyone noted uh, that needed to be brought up here? No amendments or edits. All right, great. Then we'll uh, consider the meeting minutes approved at that point. Okay, let's uh, let's take just a moment here uh, to recognize uh, our, our newest uh, city board liaison, uh, Director uh, Andre Lewis. So welcome aboard. Welcome to the, the Parks and Recreation Commission. If you'd like to say a few words real quick, we'll get started. And then a little bit later on, Towards the end of the program, we have a section where we do like to get board liaison feedback. So we'll hear from you a little bit later on again. But if, if you'd like to share a few words here now. I just want to say thanks to everyone um, for welcoming me. And I appreciate the opportunity to serve on this commission. And I just look forward to working with you all. Great. Thank you very much. And I think I saw everybody come by and, and, and introduce themselves. If you did not get a chance to uh, meet Director Lewis, please do so after this meeting. Okay, citizen communication. Does not look like we have any citizen communication. Was there any expected? No? Okay, all right. Let's move on in our agenda to staff reports then quickly. So uh, Director Couch, we'll let you kick it off there. Um, thank you, um, Chairman Bowie. Angela, do you have a report for administration? I do. Please proceed. Okay, given a report for uh, resources division, mm -hmm. um, we have a few advertisements uh, according to, to positions, uh, a few people retiring. Uh, we have a re-advertisement for our tennis area, um, golf area, and recreation. Um, also have approvals to be uh, revamping positions. Uh, we're in the process of reviewing and revamping uh, more uh, jobs to make duties more accommodating for our programs. So we're working on that. There's also maintenance reviews update uh, for our maintenance division and our horticultural division. Um, just trying to assign workers to assist with trails and to complete our vacancies in the horticultural division. Hopefully this will post uh, probably next week. Two of our main organizations that play an important vital part of our department, which is the National Parks and Recreation Association and the Arkansas Parks and Recreation Association. We, um, as we all know, if you're not learning, you're not growing. So we are currently updating and seeking interested members for two, 2023. Um, also, our summer playground program is right around the corner. Um, this is when um, we have the, the program that will usually go through probably through October. Um, this will start sometime in March. 
uh, we will probably bring on uh, at least 100 to 150 additional employees to assist. Moving forward, we have received our request for approval and we're also scheduled to have a team meeting this week to collaborate on ideas. Last but definitely not least is our accreditation. Our data specialist um, who's here today, Ms. Brianna Hatfield, is focusing on accreditation assignments. Um, our standards consist of 10 various sections and Ms. Hatfield will be assigning management to sections to help us move forward in that direction. Uh, this concludes my summary for resources. And may I say welcome back and glad you're feeling better. Moving around mostly pretty well, right? Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to recreation, but before that, Linda, can you check your um, audio and see if it's unconnected? I'm getting an echo. Doing so. Testing, testing. You just disconnect it. How about now? We're still getting feedback. That's good. Did that fix it? Oh. Bear with us, everybody. Uh, we've got just a little bit of extra um, audio feedback that we're trying to address here. We're fixed. Okay. Oh, how about now? Testing, testing. All good? Okay, go ahead, Shwana. Good morning. Morning. Um, <clears throat> I would like to just thank Angela. She talked about several things I had I had planned on talking about as far as the uh, positions and the summer playground program. But I will let you know that uh, the summer playground program will begin um, registration May first at midnight, um, and the program will go from June the twelfth until July the 20th. So they have uh, at least uh, seven weeks of fun activities and things for the kids to do. So if you have any know of anyone who need um, our playground program this summer, please tell them to check with us and, and uh, sign their kids up so that they can go out and experience all of the fun things that we have for them this summer. Um, MacArthur Military Museum, um, has launched their 2023 uh, movie at MacArthur Film Program starting on January the 17th. And um, they'll have various movies going on on Tuesday nights, uh, the third Tuesday of each month at 6 o'clock. Um, also, I would like to talk about the the shelter, as you know, we had inclement weather a uh, couple of, well, last couple of weeks um, prior, and um, we had a shelter at Dunbar Community Center. So the shelter ran from Jan uh, January the 31st until uh, February the 2nd. And so we had about over 100 people who um, were, uh, were needing shelter. And so it was a... a a great task for, for us all, and, and I thank all of the staff who supported um, helping work this shelter. Um, and if you have not had a chance to, you know, visit that, I think it's an eye-opener. We do have a lot of people in, in Little Rock that need help. So um, just kind of keep, keep them in your hearts and minds. Uh, next, I have... Um, Jim Daly Community Center. As you know, Jim Daly um, Fitness Center, Fitness Aquatic, the Aquatic Center at uh, Jim Daly has been closed to uh, due to major renovations that we are undertaking right now. So um, all of our programs, regular programs and activities are still going on. Uh, membership is still uh, increasing. Um, we're trying to um, do some different um, things with our programs for our uh, aquatics classes. Uh, we have um, a series that we'll call 
bringing uh, moving water to land, and it'll be a few of those classes um, that will be held in other areas of, of the facility during this renovation time. So that concludes my report. Do we have any questions or concerns? Any questions for Ms. Robinson? Question over here. Uh, for the summer programs, do you all reach out to the schools at all to let them know? I mean, I assume you do, but just what does that look like? Or Yes, we do, and it's also on our website. Okay. And, and um, yes, on the website. They, have to, they can sign up through our active system. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's $100 per kid. Any other questions? A quick question. Kind of the same note. Do we do anything for spring break? Um, yes, we do. Okay. The community centers are open during spring break. Um, all week, uh, the kids are there. Most of them, they pay uh, $3 to go, and they go every day. And some people pay a monthly fee. So um, that's what they, you know, we charge for for that. But um, they do have activities and programs. They go out, outings during that time. We have and they're open from all day, actually from 9 to 6 at p.m. Reach out to the schools, I guess, about that as well. Yes, um, a lot of the kids that that go to go to our community centers are at, with the Little Rock School District already, so they do participate in our after school program. I'd yeah, love to maybe like next year, maybe do like a branded staycation for like spring breakers to go visit our parks. Um, I know it's probably too late now, but I'd love to get with you maybe next year and how we can brand it to like a. Okay, I would like to talk with you more about that. Yeah, yeah sure. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. The aquatic center repairs, I know it's hard to tell, but when is the projected completion for that? Uh, we don't have a projected uh, completion date at this time, but as soon as we get that information, I will pass that along to you guys. <clears throat> I'd like to speak to that just briefly. So the renovations were started because we had a major failure with our HVAC system in the beginning of this year. So our time frame is a little bit based on how quickly we can design a new system. We obviously didn't have a system, you know, sitting in the parking lot to be replaced. So this is going to take some time to get that done. So we're using that time period that we're down to work through renovations in the, and make the facility new in terms of the aquatics area. So we're taking the opportunity to do some major overall maintenance to the other aspects of the indoor pool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, I want, back to, I think back to your report, maybe, maybe this has to do with yours as well, but you said something about National Parks and Recreation Association, Arkansas Parks and Rec Association. Yes. Are you, are y'all asking for what, are you asking for people to be a part of that or what is no, we're just giving um, an update. This is just an update that we're allowing our staff, you know, to be involved and to see who's actually interested in participating in those two organizations. Yeah, I mean, we're are just. You, are you looking for commissioners to do that, or is no, it something no, that's separate? It's, it's something uh, separate. Yeah, there, there's a conference every year for each of those organizations, and and we do send staff to those for uh, getting CEUs and all of that, yes. Great questions, everybody. One final one final note, and Shawanda, I know you and I have talked about this in, in several letters as well, but I, I do want to reiterate that every year the golf tournament that we do put on uh, does uh, raise money, and, and, and all of the money has historically, at least as, as far as my memory is concerned, goes to support programs in the recreation division. And I think, and I'm going to call on, uh, uh, Commissioner Eldridge here. I think, Lauren, last year we maybe raised $1,500, $2,000. Is that about right? Yeah, that's a good ballpark. Yeah, okay. So there is there is a, a, a philanthropic uh, um, uh, component to our golf tournament. So you can be proud of that the, the money we, we do raise in the golf tournament does go to support recreation programs. Right. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to operations. Uh, Justin Dorsey. 
afternoon. Just uh, to give everybody kind of a brief overview on what's going on in operations, you've got the sheet, but I just want to hit a, a few highlights and not take up too much time. Uh, leave some time for questions, but operations has uh, been really busy, and I, as you are aware, we've kind of got hit with some weather issues here the last couple of weeks. It's kind of thrown some of these timelines that I'm going to talk about off maybe just a little bit. Um, but we had a really good January. We had our first operations impact uh, where we were able to pull the entire operations crew. It's something that we're wanting to do each month uh, to really make an impact in a different park each month. And we're pulling in um, all the guys from all the different uh, crews and operations, whether it be forestry, landscape, all that, and, and, and work together in a very impactful way. And uh, also get in some safety training and kind of a staff meeting with that. It was just a really, really good. We, we were able to do that at our north maintenance shop at Rebsman. Um, and so that facility had not been used previously, and now we're able to staff it um, with all that work. So uh, with that being said, just to give you all kind of a, a forecast of what's going on, February is MacArthur. Uh, so we've we've set a date tentatively for, for some training of that, but it'll be later in the month of February just because we're trying to catch up on some other projects. But uh, MacArthur is February, uh, so look for some, some good things there. And then in March, um, our focus is going to be on Boyle Park. Um, and I think uh, Director Couch is going to talk about Oil a little bit, but uh, we'll be doing that month uh, for our operation impact. Uh, Western Hills, we were delayed a little bit by the rain, but sidewalks are well underway and some of the dirt work's already been done. Um, it's just right there, light at the end of the tunnel of having Western Hills uh, Playground and Pavilion open. We're excited about that. And then the last thing I want to touch on, um, I don't know if any of y'all have heard, um, but there's a banana sculpture. Um, might, have, might have seen that. Uh, it, it was uh, installed this past week. And I really appreciate Mike coming out and getting some some video and some pictures on social media of that. Um, the amount of comments has just been been phenomenal on that. I think we're between our Facebook page and the other ones of uh, the news sites. We're well over a thousand comments, a thousand shares, um, and then what we say three three thousand comments between them all. Okay, I, it's just daily changing. And then what we say one hundred and eighty one thousand impressions so it's been open so um, it's made a made a big, big impact and we're not even through with it yet uh, we still have some dirt work and some stone work and, and stuff to go there so if you haven't had a chance uh, make sure you you check that out or drive by and see that so right. any questions questions for mr dorsey one real quick sorry um you had noted on here you had gis work on the trails um have you guys historically it all worked with east initiative on that they do like school programs and one of their big focus is geospatial in the schools right so that's we're, we're just in the process of starting this since he started about a year ago he's been building those and as we get them we'll, he'll start breaching out with more that's part of his job is outreach okay so he hasn't gotten to the schools yet he's been working with cata and baca and several other gotcha. trails organizations but we we don't know what exactly we've got i mean we do but we don't have the gis information so he's as he has time he goes out and takes readings so he can tell us how many miles exactly we've got locations and then you know once we know what we've got then we can plan to work on them okay because they do it they're, those kids look for projects to actually like apply what they're learning. So that may be, uh, I'll hook you guys up. I mean, it may be yeah, somebody be to reach great. out to. Because they, they're, like I said, they're always looking for projects. So. Any other questions? Mr. Dorsey, you and Director Couch have definitely caused a social stir with the banana sculpture. Yeah, so that was very intentional by our department. Um, we didn't know that it would be a stir but um, any social media presence is, is great. Uh, we were really excited when we post a pavilion and we get 50 likes or something like that. Um, Michael Garrity is here and he, he can always speak more to this if anybody has, has any questions. But the fact that we posted something as simple as a banana and it, it has gone crazy um, is really great for our um, social media. And, and the reason why it's so important to myself is that we're gaining um, followers on our um, Facebook page. Um, we've gotten up to, what are we now, Michael, up to almost 8,500, 9,000. So just by this post alone, we've gotten almost a, another 1,000 followers. 
Um, so it really showcases the importance of doing this. And then the importance of that after is that when we showcase other things or have special events or anything else that we want to post, we're just reaching that many more people. So it's, it's, it's great. Um, JP, do you have a little bit on maintenance or? And that will be the last for a uh, staff report. I don't have much right now. Uh, the biggest thing was we dodged a bullet on the ice storm. That's always, anytime you have ice and trees, it gets, I mean, it's out uh, of infrastructure, but it really gets scary. So luckily we didn't have anything large down, just a lot of little cleanup, uh, still working on basically prepping for spring. And uh, hopefully we'll be hitting the ground running as soon as the grass starts growing. Anybody's got any questions? Questions for Mr. Rogers. Thank you, sir. All right. Very good. Thanks, uh, Director Couch. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody on the staff for the reports. Much appreciated. Let's continue on our agenda here. And the next item under old business is going to be our golf tournament. And for that right there, we will turn over to Commissioner Eldridge for a report. Um. <clears throat> I know that I was asked at the last meeting to send around a list of sponsors and the flyer. Um, I just did it today, but um, I sent you guys the last two years flyers um, just to give you guys an idea of, um, you know, <laughs> simplicity of it. Um, I'm still working on this year's flyer because I want to add the right information to it, especially with a prompt for registration online. Um, and as well as offering an early bird registration. Um, I also included a list of sponsors and they run the gamut from uh, vendors for the city to small businesses. Um, but it just kind of gives you an idea um, of that really nothing is off, off uh, limits for this tournament um, in terms of people who are willing to contribute. So, um, I, my goal is to have a, um, online payment option soon so that that can be added to the flyer and then release, um, kind of unleash the, the, the event in some way, form or fashion so that people get, uh, get the word around and the word out that there is an early bird registration this year. Hopefully that will garner um, some early signups and um, yeah, just trying to get the ball rolling a lot earlier and, and see if we can make some magic happen, especially knowing that this is going towards um, activities in summer for children or, you know, if we can, and I don't know, Angela or Shawanda, if I need to talk to y'all about it, but if we could just say the summer uh, parks playground parks program, I feel like that would be um even more tangible for for potential registrants and donors to kind of cling on to if they're interested. Um, but like I said last month, we've got our, uh, our alcohol vendors and our uh, food vendors lined up, so that's all good. It's really uh, right now a matter of finalizing um, the marketing aspect and then pushing that out. And I would you know love your guy you guys help when that happens. I do think it'll be ready uh, at our meeting next month to kind of roll out. And um, although I do think a lot of people typically sign up closer to the event to see what the weather is gonna be like, mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that this early bird option garners some early activity. Thanks uh, for that report, Commissioner Eldridge. Uh, I, I know from a past conversation, I think that, that Mr. Garrity, who is here today, might be somebody who can uh, help with the website. So I don't know, Lauren, if you had any questions for him right now, or if you guys want to touch base a little bit later. I can I can get with Mike. I, know, I have his contact information, so I'll um, I'll find a time to to bother him because I know he has nothing going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you've got all the free time, right? Nothing but okay. Very good. Uh, any questions for uh, Commissioner Eldridge on the golf tournament? By the way, thank you very much for all you're doing right there. You're doing a fantastic job. Any questions? Yes, go ahead. Hey, Lauren. Are the uh, sponsorship levels going to be 250 and 500 or like it were last year? No. And, you know, I'm, I'm still like, I've 
I've already lined up domestic domestic to be a sponsor and I, you know, I'd love your guys feedback either, you know, now or um, pr privately or, you know, however you want to do it and whatever is acceptable um, to Miss Carpenter. But I, um, what I'm thinking about this year is doing a 500 level bottom sponsorship, which can also, which can, uh, will allow a company or business to also add a team if they want, because that'll still be a hundred dollars over the registration fee. So I, that's the benefit at the baseline sponsorship level. Um, I was thinking about adding two other levels, the $1,000 and a $1,500 sponsorship level. Um, but it, it might be easier just to stick with you and for the thousand for the higher level sponsorship offer, um, the uh, electronic in cart ads for 30 days and for the $500 level um, do signs on the, on the golf course. But I think, I think for the city, for, for, for the benefit that it provides to kids in the city, um, I, I really don't think that's a whole lot to be asking, especially if, if you get your asks in early and the fact that they can also register a team with that sponsorship is, is if, if their golf, lovers um or players available i think that's also a, a a decent benefit for that affordable amount thank you commissioner lauren uh one other question and maybe you said this a moment ago uh could you remind us of the uh date one more time it's may 19th may 19th thank you very much all right any other questions at some point we'll love to we can figure out how we're going to each contact these sponsorships just so we're not duplicate efforts. So I might well, just email you or go ahead. And yeah, that's fine. And what I did, what I've done in the past is I kind of sent around a, um, just a basic, you know, campaign email saying, you know, what we were asking for, uh, what the event benefited and, you know, how they could be helpful, whether it's through money or in-kind donations or prizes. Um, so I can do that again um, once we've got the fire flyer finalized and we're ready to go. Um, I will locate those emails from past tournaments and and send it around. Again. Go, thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the next agenda section, new business. We're going to get to our subcommittee reports here. And the first one on the list is social media and outreach. And you were already hearing from Commissioner France, who was volunteered to serve as the chair of the subcommittee last month. So I don't know if you've got anything. I know you were, you were talking there with uh, Commissioner Eldridge about some things. Anything else to add this month? No, I came here in person, so I wouldn't uh, screw up the, the uh, online like I did last time. <laughs> but no, I just, I know, Mike, I might want to get with you afterward, just kind of see what we do. I would love to do maybe a monthly e newsletter. I don't know if we have email addresses of, of maybe we could send out just a monthly, hey, here's what's coming on in March. Something that would, we can you know, run analytics, figure out who's opening what and who's viewing it. I don't know if we do that now, or if we have email addresses of people. Uh, but just an idea that we'd love to run by. There used to be a paper newsletter that they printed yeah. in, 10 years ago. That anything's really been done since then. So, okay. But I think different areas have different groups of email addresses. So okay. Just compiling it all and bringing it together. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Commissioner France, for that. Let's. Um, uh, I know you'll you'll have some other things to talk about later on for sure when it comes to social media and outreach. Let's move on to master plan. So we'll look to uh, Commissioner Smith for. Uh, any update on master plan subcommittee? Master plan subcommittee did not meet uh, in the last month, and so no update there. Okay. No worries at all. First part of the year is always hard. Got still lot, lots of things going on, so yeah, no worries there. Okay, let's move on quickly to uh, an update on the Parks Conservancy, and kind of like with Commissioner France, I asked uh, Commissioner Eldridge, to uh, 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 speak to that, and uh, did you have a couple of points that you'd like to share there? Uh, Lauren. Sorry, court has just been canceled. Um, Parks Conservancy, big deal. Today is the day that we have launched the Friends program mm -hmm. online. So 
you and your closest friends and acquaintances can now go to, um, let me, I want to get it right, cityparksconservancy.org and sign up uh, to be a friend of the park. And you can do so for as little as $5 a month. Um, to be a member, it's you do a monthly recurring fee. <laughs> and um, so it's awesome because it's, it's really affordable and it gets you certain benefits. And I expect that they will grow as time moves on. Um, but those would include events that the Parks Conservancy holds and um, probably some some sort of insight into what, what may be going on within that group as time goes on. Um, there probably will be some more information about this launch coming out soon, but for now, it's just important to know that it is live on the website, that you can sign up to be a member. <laughs> and, um, you know, Matt and I would, would really strongly encourage everybody who's on this commission to show their support and become a member. Um, it's it's really one of the easiest memberships that um, that you could hope to have. So uh, there are other levels, but like I said, the the, the most basic level, the, the most affordable sustaining membership is five dollars a month. Thank you, Commissioner Eldridge. Any questions for Commissioner Eldridge? There, I have some questions. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I understand this was going on, and I understand that this is kind of a soft rollout right so um would love to be able to talk to the conservancy a little bit more about getting some information that we can use to put out on our social media and and at a certain point kind of get it a, a lot more um broadcast or or in more people's hands so that we can um really push it so. absolutely completely agree all right very good Let's move on to the next section there, park highlights, and looks like we're gonna have uh, some discussion around Boyle Park, Director Couch. So as part of the, um, is this on? Yeah. So as part of the master plan uh, subcommittee, we were asked to give a quick report on Boyle Park. Um, so this is just, um, we're gonna show a couple of quick slides um, that I'll reference a couple of times, but um, Boyle Park is one of our older parks. Uh, it's in Ward 6 and um, it has some great CCC error uh, structures. And so the next slide will be, just kind of a, we'll zoom into that, is this is a conceptual plan that I've been working off of for years. And this really is just to show you kind of the general boundaries. This is off of Bull Park Road between, on the southern end of the park is 36th Street. And then just a, above it is um, 12th Street or Resmond uh, Tennis Facility. But anyway, this is on Rock Creek Park. Uh, Rock Creek is goes through the park. But anyway, the yellow lines in the top our mountain biking trails that were built by volunteers and have been some of our oldest mountain bike trails. Um, some of the orange lines there are some of our paved trail systems. Originally, there were three playgrounds, three uh, three pavilions as different structures in the, in the park. Uh, we're currently down to two playgrounds. So I'm just kind of giving you an overview of, of what the park assets were generally saying. Um, we have made some improvements to pavilion number one. It was a uh, ADA um, conservancy type grant fund that we worked on to improve some of the accessibility and the flagstoning to make it nice again. Um, but some of the exciting things that I wanted to share today, uh, the next couple slides will show some uh, quick views of uh, a mountain biking trail uh, improvement plan. Uh, so years ago, three years ago, roughly, we applied for an RTP grant through the federal government, which is a recreational trails program grant. We received funding of almost about $200,000. So we are working to um, get this underway. We have bid the project and it consists of roughly about two new miles of trail. But also another thing that's really exciting is about 13 new 
uh, skill features. So this is for features that uh, kids and individuals can come out and, and ride mountain bikes on and try out their skills. Uh, as many of y'all probably know, we did build a very successful River Mountain mountain biking facility. It's more immediate advance. And so this area here is planned to be more of beginner friendly type uh, to grow you into that. This, this system was actually supposed to come online before River Mountain, but has been, um, had to be rebid a couple times. And now it's in our city attorney's office just waiting to finalize a contract. Once that contract is finished, the contractor is waiting to start the uh, project. So a couple other slides, just kind of showing some quick maps of, of plans. I know this is very just kind of high level overview of the plans. Um, but anyway, that's that uh, really exciting project. One other one that I wanted to touch on is this. This is a new playground. And so the playgrounds that were in Boyle Park, there originally were three. Uh, we removed one many years ago. The second one, which is by pavilion number two, uh, needs to be removed as well. And then the one by pavilion number three, which is the larger one, is outdated as well, and it's falling apart, and we're working on replacing that. And what I mean by that is we applied for an outdoor rec grant, received funding for an outdoor rec grant, and uh, roughly about $200,000, just shy of that. Um, a rec grant is a, is a total... Total possibility is 250. It's a 50 50, so we match it with 250. So you have upwards of, of a chance to get a half million dollars for a project. Um, I'm going to try to work to add more to it than that and really make a destination playground. And this is some of the original concepts I started working with the vendor just to get some ideas to, to completely replace what we have there now. And I look forward to trying to get this constructed. Uh, later this year or first of next year to, for a really new um, playground there. So you can see the, the goal for Boyle is new trail systems and a new playground to really make Boyle a, a special place. So that's kind of my quick overview for, for Boyle, if there's any questions about it. Questions for Director Couch? Commissioner Linda? This is something that came out of the master plan committee meeting that we had earlier uh, at the beginning of 2023. We asked for more of an in-depth review to really look at some of the parks and to understand what was happening and, and really the plans that had been many years uh, in the making to get here. And I look back at this master plan report and it talks about many of these trades for Boyle Park. So I'm glad to see these moving along. and. I'm glad to see this on the agenda and hope we'll continue this, this update on, on parks um, and a focus on each of them. Completely agree. Any other questions? Do we have a, do we have a way to um, show traffic that the park has brought in the last few years and the upcoming years, the, the foot traffic and users? That way we can see um, you know, how often the park was used and the growth that the park has brought in as well. So currently, um, the the quick answer to that is no. The But the more solid answer is that, so for trail systems alone, we are investing in trail counters, and we can put trail counters on a trail, and as somebody crosses like a laser beam or whatnot, it, it, we keep track. And so we've, we've been able to achieve that at our River Mountain um, asset there. Uh, Boyle, we want to do the same thing. We're in the process of, of purchasing more trail counters because we're trying to keep counting where we are at River Mountain. We really want a, a long span of time to do that. But in general, like your question, I think more it might be even referenced to like a playground or something like that. It's hard to really do that. Um, if anybody has more of an understanding of how to collect that information, uh, we do. We have built playgrounds and you know we've seen the 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 new users right and we can and we can go out there and count for a few days or something but we don't have the staff to be able to go out there and do a a total uh count i mean we, we another good example would be say like the pickleball courts in canis i drive by there all the time and there's 50 cars there i know that there's a lot of high attendance there but we don't have really good trackers we've talked about putting some trackers maybe like on vehicle entry points and doorways of our community centers and stuff. At our community centers, we track attendance by the people at the front door will we'll keep track, right? Kind of a manual system, but I really think we need to get to a more digital system on that. Um, and then I actually wanted to mention one thing that I left off that's huge is 
um, the Tri Creek Greenway, which is a, a big vision of myself to connect uh, War Memorial and Hindman Park, part of this, um, another whole project is actually about to come into um, bid to go to construction, and it actually uh, will connect to Boyle Park, the first phase of it. So uh, there's currently a couple miles of, of nice paved trail in Boyle. When this is connected right at, uh, south on the south edge down here by 36, you'll be able to ride all the way down to Highway 5 or walk or run or whatever you want to do, and it connects many more thousands of acres of parkland. So um, another really big, great thing. And then we'll look forward to improving the trail system in Boyle more to meet the Tri Creek Greenway standard. Yeah. I used to live in that area. It's a very heavily used park. Um, I do know that we have uh, the uh, pavilions that we rent out, so those pavilions can hold up to like 50 to 100 people, and they're booked almost every weekend during the summer, so that's another way that we can track attendance for that area that you yep. mentioned, but it is it's very heavily used. Any other questions? Which playground was this going to be? Is this near this the basketball is the, courts or like which which part is this? I'm sorry. I, I know you said it, but I didn't grasp. Right. It. So there were originally there's three pavilions and originally there was a playground next to each pavilion and there were small playgrounds. Um, this is going to replace where the hand is on the map there, which is by pavilion three, which is by the lake. And it was the bigger playground of all of them. And so the concept is because parks currently are limited on funding. I mean, I don't have a pot of just to be able to go out and build multitudes of playgrounds, right? So the the, con the concept for Boyle is if we're going to build a playground, let's build a really nice destination, large playground. So if you're using Boyle Park, you can go to that playground. But the days of having multiple playgrounds in one park is really um, a different story today. So it's more like MacArthur when you redid that. I mean, it's just right. Like, right. Everything's at one spot, like all the instead of being sort of spread out. Right. The concept, even if we get into more of that, would be Pavilion One and Two are going to be more focused on the fishing, the trail access, the the woodland ex aspect, the big fireplace and grilling and all that. A different kind of concept from a Pavilion rental, whereas Pavilion Number Three will be right on top of the playground and will be really you know, kind of more specialized for the playground. So as, if you called and said, I wanted to rent a pavilion at the playground, you would have a choice of those depending on the being reserved. Um, there has been another concept of depending on how big this playground becomes is actually maybe adding a fourth pavilion, which would be better for our reservations, assets, rentals, all kinds of different things. Uh, that's been a consideration for Boyle as well. That's what I was about to joke, is you'll probably need to build a new pavilion here shortly. Yeah, that's yeah. going to need it, because the new playground is going to bring even more. Right. So it's all, it all comes back to budget, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway. Always does. Great. Thank you, uh, Director Couch, for that update on Boyle Park. Much appreciated. Uh, do you want to, uh, Director Couch, from your position right there, do you want to go ahead and make a, a special statement on the, the upcoming social event? Sure. So on your agenda, you'll see we had a um, event on there, a social event indicating a kayaking. Um, what what this is is so is some of you are new or some of, and some of y'all are more existing commissioners or you you realize I've been kind of pushing social events. This is a um, social event for the commission, but it's it's all on your own. And what I mean by that is, I don't know how many of y'all want to go kayaking or whatnot, but we're going to find a date and and go down to um, a local water body here and do some kayaking. And I want to, and we'll invite everybody to come. And um, it might be your thing, it might not be. Um, I still plan on having another social event similar like we did last year, where we'll do more of an invite, more of a, a gathering that won't be so um, based on just that type of activity. But uh, as anybody has any ideas for social activities or things outside of this, um, always bring them to our attention. I think it's a good opportunity for our group to get together outside of this as well. So, Great. Thank you, Director Couch. I know there will be more information to follow on that, so watch your uh, inboxes for uh, details on dates and times and so on and so forth. 
All right, very good. Then moving on to the next item uh, of the agenda, we were going to hear, it looks like, from uh, Ms. Hadfield there. Uh, yes, next, so coming up. I would like to introduce her. She's Please one do. of our new staff. Uh, she's our data special program coordinator. Okay, so I got that right. But um, to me, this is a very important role, and I'm excited that we've been able to find her and hire her. Um, she's going to keep track of all of our data. So when somebody says something about, Shawana said, you know, our rentals and our attendance at our, at our um, pavilions, we'll be able to keep track of all that now. Um, and so we'll be able to, instead of just having a one big attendance number, we're going to really break that down. And I've gotten a whole lot of, every time I see her, I give her a new assignment on terms of collecting inventory for our assets and all kinds of stuff. So she has a quick report uh, just to kind of introduce herself and show a few things. And, and there you go. Very good. Welcome, Ms. Hatfield. Thank you. Thank you, Director Couch. Um, as was mentioned previously, my name is Brianna Hatfield. I'm your new Special Programs Data Coordinator. Um, I started December 5th. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself. I am part of the Transformative Initiative 3, uh, Special Projects and Data. I graduated from Harding University with a Bachelor's of Science in Public Administration, a Bachelor's of Arts in Spanish, and a Bachelor's of Arts in Leadership and Ministry. And I attended and graduated from Oklahoma State with a Master's in Poli Sci, and I'm currently attending Liberty University for a PhD in Public Administration. So I'm really interested in this, and I think that I could help a lot with data. Um, in regards to what I would like to be talking about really quickly, parks and recreation vacancies, pavilion earnings, asset inventory booklet, and accreditation. Briefly touch on those. Uh, regarding the vacancies from January of 2022 to this January, we started out with about 29 vacancies in Parks and Recreation Department, and as of last month, we filled seven of those, and as you can see, we're still working diligently to fill those roles. So hopefully by this time next year, you'll see all of these at zero. Regarding the pavilion earnings, it kind of helps with, as Ms. Shawanda and Mr. Couch said, uh, with tracking. And regarding Boyle Park, as you can see, they... Um, in 2021, they garnered a little over $3,000. Um, it depends on what pavilion that you rent, how much it costs, and that can kind of show you how many people use that. I believe Boyle's right now is at $65 a rental. So, I mean, if you want to do the math, I'm not good at simple math <laughs> in my head. So give me a calculator and I'll get back to you. Last year, um, oh, and in 2021, we earned about 32000 with our pavilion rentals. And in last year, that number jumped to 65,000. So as you can see, people are really utilizing our pavilions. They are a great source of income and that people are enjoying these areas. Um, as of this year, so far, we are projected at least 16,000 in rentals and it's only February. So I'm sure that number will increase. Uh, the asset inventory booklet, as Mr. Couch touched on, it is basically going to be a representation and detailed program of what assets we have so that we can use that asset inventory booklet to see what assets we need in the future. Hopefully by, hopefully in the next six months it will be done. I don't think it'll take that long, but who knows how many assets we'll have. <laughs> Uh, as far as accreditation, as Ms. Angela mentioned, we are working on that process. It is going to be a lengthy process, but I know that we can do it, and I'm sure that I will get a lot of feedback from the commission meeting, and a lot of you guys will be helpful with that. Uh, that's really all I had. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Hey, Brianna, great report. Can you define what an asset is? Is it, is it equipment? Is it a park? It, for right now, we are looking at the pavilions, the restrooms, what facilities we have, okay. courts, fields, everything that's in our parks. And I'm sure Mr. Couch can give you more information. So I'll, I'll give you just a brief understanding of why I asked for that, too. So every year in our budget, we have to um, – I've, I'm asked to indicate like how many tennis courts we have, how many assets we have. So when I looked at it um, in, in the past, I just provided what numbers I was requested to the director. Now when I'm looking at it, I've started asking questions like, well, why don't we not have our restrooms on this list? You know, and they said, well, that's your call now. So now what we're doing is really getting a real big picture of our inventory and also the other thing is, is is defining what an asset is. So we in the past would say, well, there's a soccer field. There's two soccer fields at Bull Park. Okay, where are the two soccer fields at Bull Park? Well, those two fields there, we could make them into soccer fields. Okay, so we're I'm asking staff to give a definition of what these assets are, and so then we can really define it and then give um, actual proof being an image or something of that. So anyway. Any other questions? 
No more questions? Ms. Hatfield, you've got a lot on your plate, it sounds like. Welcome to the team. Thank you. We appreciate hearing from you today. Thank you. All right. Folks, we're at 1251. Wow, the time has flown by. Uh, very quickly on the next to the next uh, agenda item um, um, uh, is, well, well, quite frankly, for more agenda items next month, anything that we need to add to the agenda. I think we've really started to settle in on a nice agenda here. Anything else that needs to be added for, for next month? No? Okay. We'll carry on with the agenda that we have uh, for next month there. All right. Now, let's see. Director Lewis, this is the part of the program where we get to board liaison feedback. You're our representative today. What we typically like to do is hear any feedback that you have, any thoughts that are parks and recreation related um, uh, wisdom counsel that you'd like to share? I will say um, I'm very pleased with everything I heard. And Justin and I just left Boyle Park a few minutes ago. So just hearing the updates on the playground equipment, that really makes me happy. Um, but with Ben's comments on the social media, I totally agree. I look forward to seeing more um, outreach on that aspect because that's just the way of the world now. That's how we get information out and make sure everyone knows. Um, I have a son that goes to Stevens after school care every day and then he participates in the summer playground program. So I'm familiar with it just because of the years of participating, but it would be great if we could have more outreach. Um, and I will say I've had a lot of comments about, or just citizens making comments about Kiwanis Park being reopened. So what can we do to start that conversation? Which, which park is that again? I'm sorry. Kiwanis, Kiwanis. Kiwanis Park. Oh. So um, I'll, I'll speak to that just briefly, just for the group. Um, Kiwanis Park was, did come up quite a bit in our public input sessions that we held for our bond funding. So once we received our bond, the bonds were passed, the millage, um, we did several um, public input sessions. And at those, uh, particularly, I think it was at the West Central Community Center, we had people that spoke out highly about Kiwanis Park and their needs. Um, it is definitely on our list to utilize some bond funding to go out there. Um, the question that you proposed, I think, was when can we reopen it? So in, in our in the department's view, it's not closed. However, there is, I know, I think you're, what you're referencing probably is, is the parking lot and the gate. And I would love to speak with you more about that. Okay. Um, that's a bigger topic to cover and try to figure that out. But um, we did recently remove an old playground out there that needed to be removed. And so playground and basketball improvements are on the uh, list there. Um, the neighborhood has a big, big, big long list. And we won't be able to meet all of those needs. But um, it is a, is a part that we'll get some, um, some love in the future here. So. Thank you. Yep. Very good. Well, thanks for being with us today. Welcome aboard. You're going to hear a lot about parks uh, when you come here every month and all the, the, the fun things that these uh, guys and gals are working on, and they do a lot, of, a lot of great work. So glad to have you on board with us. All right, folks, I think uh, our next item there is just to quickly recap that our next meeting is, of course, on Wednesday, March the 8th, uh, 2023 here. Same, same location, same time. Please try to attend, and, and a, a thank you again to everybody. We've got all seven of our commissioners here today. Appreciate you all being here. Don't forget uh, the, uh, the uh, watch your inboxes for the upcoming social event uh, for, for kayaking. And Director Lewis, if you have something you're interested in, we'd love to see you out there too. Uh, look, watch for uh, uh, information about that. And there's also going to be, and, and Director Couch, if, if you want to, Speak sure. to this. Go ahead. Yeah. So there's one more very important announcement today. Um, there has been uh, brought to my attention that there may be a need this month to have a special call meeting uh, to review some um, different things for the city for uh, some parkland um, assets. So uh, please keep aware of your um, if we send something out, please stay in tune and we'll be providing some information of when that meeting may occur. If I may, um, Chair Bowie and uh, Director Couch, uh, according to the bylaws of the Parks Commission, special meetings may be called by the chair upon 10 days written notice of the time, date, and location and purpose of the meeting to all commission members, to the Parks Department, and to the Little Rock Public Relations Manager. 
for purposes of Freedom of Information Act notice. Okay, we'll, perfect. To perfect. follow the bylaws, we'll just provide 10, 10 days notice, please. Yeah, perfect. absolutely. Thank you very much. Just yeah, so be sometime this month. Thank you. Yeah, sometime this month. So, commissioners, please do watch your your inboxes. There, this this will be an important thing to to attend. Special called meetings are are uh, rare things. So, please uh, watch your inbox for that. So, you're going to be watching for a couple of different things here: the social event, the special meeting coming up, and then um, last but not least, I'd like to go back to what Commissioner Elger was talking about. Go out to City Parks Conservancy, join, be a friend. And uh, uh, you'll hear more about that. So one more. very quickly, go ahead. Go. One more announcement. Um, I'll actually let, let Mr. Garrity make this announcement. This is for the marathon. Uh, he just brought to my attention that the marathon will be happening before um, our next meeting. So if he could give just a brief update of, of that. Oh. Yes, we are 23 days away from marathon weekend, if anybody's counting. Um, we're expecting about 9,000 people to come in to participate on the weekend. We have a kids race, a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, and a marathon. We have a health and fitness expo on Friday and Saturday. It's March 3rd and 4th, and then 5K, 10K, and the kids race is on Saturday the 4th. A marathon and half marathon are on the 5th. Love to see any of you come down. If you want to come down and get a behind-the-scenes look at how everything's set up, we'd love to, love to have you. Just let me know. Thank you. Any questions on marathon? Marathon questions. Yes. Is late on the marathon. Uh, hang on, uh, Commissioner Smith, you had the floor first. Go ahead. Uh, I'm very pleased that this year, instead of using bottled water, that we are using local uh, water. Uh, <laughs> yes. Slide, uh, and we had, we had a we have a water vendor that's been with the race for the first 20 years that sold, and so they're no longer part of the race. So uh, Central Arkansas Water has actually partnered with us. So instead of taking 300 or so five gallon water jugs out onto the course, they have located foss existing faucets. So they're just hooking the hose up. So we have unlimited central Arkansas water we're, we'll be using. Central Arkansas water for the marathon. Very good. Excellent. Thanks, Mr. Garrity. Appreciate that. Uh, and good luck with the marathon. I know you'll do a great job. Uh, Commissioner Eldridge, I think you were weighing in there. Go ahead. Well, I was just asking if Leland was running. Are you running a marathon? <laughs> you can't run the kids. So, so great question. Um, I've been, I was introduced to it last year and I ran with my daughter in the kids rocker part of the marathon. Um, she's interested and I'm, we're planning on doing it again this year. Um, I'd maybe be interested in doing more than that, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll go from there. We'll see. You've got, you've yeah. got 20 days. All right. Thanks everybody for being here. Twelve fifty nine. We covered a lot of ground today in a in a in a, a one hour span. Twelve fifty nine. We'll adjourn. See you guys uh, next month. Again, watch your inboxes for various emails coming through. Thanks everybody.